Okay. So we're, today we're going to be uh, showing you a bit more with the, the Muto Value Jet 426 UF. It is our latest addition to the UV line to complement our Compress IUV 600 and 1200S. Um, it's a, a little bit smaller format machine, doesn't have as much depth, but the, what we're trying to show you today is a lot of the application that folks wouldn't think of that you could really get in such a small package. It is a, um, the print area on it is just about 18.6 by 12.55, all right? So that allows you to pick up 12 by 18, which is a pretty good size to pick up a lot of things, and we're gonna play off of that today. We're actually gonna show you an application where it's more of a kind of a, an Etsy fun type of application, um, and then we're also gonna show you a practical business application you could use your UV printer for for local restaurants, places like that as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. What I've already done, if I'm already bringing the camera forward, and I'll show you this on the computer in a minute. And, and by the way, ask your, uh, ask your questions throughout this time and we'll, uh, we'll get to them shortly. All right, see, so as you see here on the bed, what I've done, you're gonna be printing a 12 by 12 sign, which is a diamond type sign, you know, it's gonna be diagonal. And then we have a regular 12 by 18 sign actually laid out on the, in the software, a layer that was just the outlines for those. And nicely, this side is exactly the same on both of the signs. And so I've already printed that onto the bed. That's gonna be for us to target with, make it easy to position one after another sign. So this is spot. instead of having a special jig for absolutely everything, if Correct. it's simple, you can just print the outline. Yeah, there's no need, especially on something like this that the mat will hold down. This is a silicone mat that uh, will hold a crazy. We, uh, we sometimes will lay stuff on and tell the customer to pick it up. <laughs> they can't get a hold of it. Okay. So this will allow you to target and put it in the same position. Cool, and just uh, a few things before we go over, to the, over the software and everything, I wanna point out that it is on a table. So Correct. it is a tabletop or desktop Yes, uh, yes, machine unlike the other compress units. This table, I believe, is a 30 inch by 48 inch. Yeah. All right. So that's really all you need. Ours is a little higher than we'd like it to be, but it has to be mobile in here. So you could put it on it. Actually, you could, the, this table comes without casters. Yep. So without the four or five inches or so, it'd be the, actually the perfect height to work from. And everyone always asks, that's a U line table. We get these yeah, tables yeah, it's from a U line packing table. Um, this has got a nice shelf underneath where we actually have our UPS. We do recommend you have a UPS on these. When you're running them yep and how transportable is it it's it, it's it's two person transportable you know okay. if you had to, if you wanted to take this to an event good thing is it does have it is cartridge based so you don't have to worry about Ink spillage spills. or spillage that you would get from a, a bulk system so you could literally lock down the head two people pick it up put it in the back of an suv okay it, it's like 178 pounds so it's it wouldn't you know you have a little bit of beef to it but not a lot pretty okay. easy to transport that makes sense um okay. Next, we're going to show off something in the software. Yeah, we are. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. And I'm gonna switch our screen here. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, actually. Well, are you switched? Switch? I am, switch. I have already switched. switched. Well, I'm not gonna do that then. All right, so we're looking at the software right now in here, and we actually have, as you can see, this is actually the outlines that I printed on the bed. This representation here that you see the, the heavy black outline, that represents the print area of the printer. We've actually just for convenience sake set it 18.5 by 12.5. And so that I know is gonna orient to the zero zero on the printer up in this corner. So what I've done is you'll see I have multiple layers over here. I'm gonna take that layer, turn it not to print. I'm gonna turn it off so it's no longer visible. And we're gonna do, yes, that's the sign that we want. And it's just to see what we actually have going on here. As we can see it by dropping that in the sign blank turns to the color that our sign's gonna be. This is, uh, for those of you who keep up with the, the current news, this is a problem we have here in Florida. Um, <laughs> when it gets cold down in the Southern part of Florida, our, our lovely uh, non-resident alien iguana population, they uh, very much so like the people who spend their summer winters in Miami <laughs> can't handle the cold. Yeah. Fortunately, the folks that are our snowbirds don't fall out of trees on you but iguanas do. So we decided to have some fun with this. So I, I just want to back down up here. That is actually a real thing. A, it, it iguanas really is. in trees, if it gets too cold, they basically go to sleep, hibernation, right. Right. and then they will drop on tourists. Yes. And never they, on people from Florida. A big iguana can weigh 20 pounds. And yeah. uh, please don't Google search this now. Wait till the webinar is over. Right. Stay with the webinar, all right? So we thought we'd have a little bit of fun with it and, uh, and show you how to do a sign. This would be a kind of sign you would do Think of this in the same category of pug crossing or you know basset hound crossing or whatever kind of animal you have. We have those kind of fun signs that people play with. 
And so what we're going to do with this, I'll just show you, we're going to, I actually have already loaded up over on the, I mean, have a over by the printer. I have the sign there. What I would do is in, now, since I turned this print layer on, you'll notice that the other two layers are turned not to print. All right. So I can set up this job, even though I'm doing multiple things, I can set this up. So it's all in one file. Let's say you were doing a whole run. If you have a store that you sell the chosen animal uh, crossing signs, you could actually set it up so everything is on here and each layer might be a corgi, one might be a cat, whatever they are. And then you just turn those layers off and then you just save that as one file for that type of sign. You can turn the layers on and off as you go. Okay, I just wanna roll things back a little bit and say that this is one of the two software applications that come with, the, with the, all of our UV printers. Correct. And this one is specifically set for design. So you yes. don't have to learn anything that Don is describing right now. Correct. It's just a show and tell. So let me put it this way. If you're getting into this business, you probably have a graphics program that you prefer to use. Illustrator, Corel Draw, Photoshop, right? What we use the designer here for, though I did do this entire design and designer, you could absolutely have done this in Illustrator or, or Corel or Photoshop. And then we like to use this to set up the multiple layers. It makes it, it's a lot easier to come in here. I might've brought in this design that I did in Illustrator and the customer may have sent me the other sign that they had done in Photoshop, right? So I can bring those designs in here and actually just turn them into layers. It's just, okay. it's a great place to launch and it's, it's printer friendly when we're working with that it. makes sense all right so what we're going to do is at this point as we said we've got this layer which is this group here as we see right there this is the layer that we're getting ready to print and i've got it turned on to see and it's turned on to print all right i'm going to use the design and now what we do is we actually are going to send this job over to what's called a rip which is a print driver on steroids best way to talk about it and when i send it i'm going to tell it where do I want it to go in the rip? And now we do have on this computer, we have three printers set up. We have our two compress and we have the 426. I want to print to the 426 single layer, which means I don't, I don't want it to, uh, no, actually on this one, I'm sorry, I printed this one on the auto white because we're printing onto a yellow sign. I'm going to send this to the auto white layer. It's going to generate white, all right, for my blues and reds and whatnot to, be pr to print underneath those. And I'm going to tell it to print it relative to the sign blank because I'm orienting just like I did for my outlines. I'm orienting off of this point right here. I'm going to go ahead, say OK, send it to the auto white. What it's going to do is automatically generate a white for me. I'll show you over in the rip one special thing I did here. All right, now I need to swap screens. OK, so go up to stop share. Stop share. And then click down on the bottom. You'll see it says share. That one? Yep. And uh -huh. then pick the screen you want to show. We're new to this, guys. Where this this is I think the only the second day that yeah, we do yeah. this. This it, it seemed to work really well, though. It's easy for you all to use. So, all right. can, so you, should, can I, everybody see the screen now? I do want to point out that this rip software is the same design. It's the same rip that we use yep. for our direct garment printers and for our digital heat effects yep. systems, and for all of the UV line. All the beautiful thing is, line. is we can take you almost cradle to grave here yep. <laughs> with with this. If it prints and we sell it. This is the same interface you're going to be used to. It's a very easy transition for folks who are using a DFX or are using a... And, that, an and that's handy because we we printed on urns for a customer the other day. So. Right, right. Wow. Wow. He went there. All right. So we've brought this design up, all right? And we have over here, you can't see the white, but there is white text right there. One of the things that I do want to do with this is I want to set it up so that I don't, there's no need, I'm printing on a yellow sign, there's no need to put white under each one of the iguanas, right? And so I wanna go in here, in my processing options, I'm gonna tell it, when you have my white underbase, put 0% white under black. No need to waste that ink. It probably would increase the cost of this sign by 15 cents, Okay. you know, so 30, 40% increase, all right? The other things I'm just gonna keep the same, I'm going to print this at 720 by 1080, and I am going to print this bi-directional because it's a sign. It's not something, it's not super duper high detail, and we, we're looking for speed out of this. So, okay. And then the first thing I like to do is I like to process my job, and it gives me two things I can do. Number one, I can look at it and see. Number two, it'll also give me a job cost. So if you're doing, you're bidding a job, you could actually look here, and it'll give you the ink cost based on the cost per liter of the ink. 
this job is 35 cents worth of ink. Okay, so All right. it's 35 cents in supplies, Correct. basically. Right, and then plus the cost of the, of the blank. blank. Yeah, whatever the blank is, these are actually extras that were sent to us from a customer for samples. I can't believe they pay much more than a dollar if that. Okay. Very most, very most. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go load the sign up. I'm gonna have Mark yep. drive from this side, and then we will print this out for you. All right, stop share, so we're showing the video. Does anybody have any questions so far? I know that um, the RIP software is, uh, is pretty deep, so there's a lot to know, but you don't have to know it all on day one. Correct. So I'd say that it's remarkably user-friendly. Yep, and you um, can set it up. We, we give you a bunch of presets of the cues. You actually, as you go along, you can develop the, your own cues if there's certain ways you like to print certain things you want to do. I've de developed a couple of print modes myself that we use for doing, like the outline. I don't really care about the detail of my outline. Right. I just want to rip through it. So yep. we, have a, we actually have a mode called super fast. Literally. Right? That, that, that flies through. Now what I'm doing is I got to remember, this is the origin of my machine. All right, so on the screen. Pay attention to where you want your holes. Right, right. Especially right. because of the holes, all right? So I want the holes to be top and bottom yep. on this design when I'm done. I'm literally just gonna lay this in here, down on. You can see right there, it's lined up. And we'll close the lid. We're gonna hit set media, and that's actually gonna run the, the design back through. It's gonna run the design, the, the tray back through, and there's a laser that checks for the height. So it's pre-checking the entire width of the bed prior to the print, yep. all right? It says print ready. Mark, I know. if you wanna just click the word print. That I can do. That sound you hear is the white ink circulation that kicks in whenever you send a print job over. Okay, it's gonna go fast. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold something over this. Oh, so you can see it. So you don't have idea. to look at the reflection of our, of our lights. Is that good? Yes, yeah, that helps a lot. Kind of the theme in today's webinars, because so far we've showed the, the new Avance 1501C 2020 and the G4, they're incredibly quiet. Yep. Like the, I mean, when we had embroidery machines and DTG printers running in our old showroom, uh, it was loud. Like you couldn't, you couldn't hear anybody without, without the mics. So, you know, while we're talking about that with the new products we're adding, is where does this fit in? And... You know, we sell the two larger UV printers, which physically have been uh, prohibitive for some businesses. You know, we have a decent amount of our customers who are in home base, but we also have a decent amount of customers who are in relatively small retail space and whatnot. And that having the space for a big UV printer really is, it was somewhat of a challenge to them. And so that's one of the reasons we ended up partner with Mucha. This is a great size machine and it really, it's footprint versus its print area is yeah. nice. And it's something that'll fit through virtually any door. You may have to tip it a little bit for a 32 inch door to get it in, but it is so that anybody can add it. But it's not just for the traditional UV printer. Right. A lot of our UV printer customers are people that are coming from a, a background of the awards and engraving industry, design industry and whatnot. Apparel, we've got yep. a lot of apparel people. Well, we're starting, that's where this is really gonna fit yeah. in. You now, know, the, the price point on this is 20, 21,000, yep. something like that? that. Range, okay. depending on which package you get, 20 to $21,000. So it, it's in the price range of a DTG or a couple of embroidery machines or even a, a really maxed out DFX system. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right, so it allows companies to add in a whole different aspect, especially for your apparel people. Your apparel people are buying ad specialties things. They're getting luggage tags done. They're getting signage done, right? Phone cases. There's there's a lot of opportunity. Yep. It's you'll you'll find that it's sure. easier to sell to your customers. While this while this prints, why don't you uh, give people some ideas while you're talking about what? Well, we got a few of them over here. It just so happens. Now this is a little larger. This, but this is a canvas. You can do up to a 12 by 18 canvas. This is yep. a larger one we did in one of the larger printers. 
Do you have the ability to print on phone cases? These are two phone cases that we printed on actually with texture. You can see this one's like a basket weave. This one is like a, a gator skin. This was actually uh, our lead tech in the UV market. This was his cell phone cover for about two years. And uh, it actually gave up the ghost before the print did. There right? you go. Um, we, have, we have some printed poker chips. <laughs> oh, yeah. Poker chips. You know, you have golf balls, right? That you can do. All these things. You have up to 2.75 inches that you can print height wise, depth wise on it. These are some coasters we did. These are just faux stone type of uh, tiles that we bought at a local big box hardware store like, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, something like that. That you tune. And there was no white ink printed on these, so these printed pretty quick, relatively low cost, less than a nickel a piece to print something like that. Now here's a, a smaller, this is a smaller canvas we did actually is textured as well this was uh this is one of mark's prize his mark marks likes to go <laughs> over and and play in michael's and he found this this is just like a a metal part that we actually printed this design onto and it's Brittany and max because Brittany's longer and max is shorter yeah. um but <laughs> the idea is you can just go and this what did this probably cost you it's like a buck yeah like a dollar you know 50. something like that and the ink on this, because we did print a white underbase, this is probably a 35 cent print itself as well. So yeah. you could take something like that, you get a favor. We, and there, there's an article in one of the major trades about how I, I've done it with oddball shapes. We actually, this, we actually just photocopied, took a scan of the shape of this. I did yeah. a quick trace of it, printed it on the bed so we could target it exactly. And then we Perfect. had very little bleed. So we do have a question. Um, is there anything that it can't print on? Yes, next question. Uh, live uh, animals, live animals. You, you, well, you need to slow them down anyway. Yeah. So what can you not print on? Well, let's start off with the logical thing. Anything that's more than 2.75 inches tall. Okay. All right. Uh, so, you know, the physical limitations of the printer, you can print on items. I'd have to do an exact measurement. I want to say that the bed on this is like 22 inches by about 14 inches. You only have a, a smaller print area than that. So if it's outside of that area range, you're not going to be able to print on it. Materials are going to be certain materials. Obviously, silicone will be one of those materials that you don't want to try to print on because we use it for a bed yeah, that we clean off on a regular off, basis, right? right? Um, I wouldn't print on anything that somebody's going to wear, right? right. Um, UV inks are not meant to be exposed. You know, we you'll see if you watch when you get the machine, you watch the uh, the training video on how to do the maintenance. We wear gloves, we wear glasses, right? Because the inks themselves can cause they're not going to kill you. I wouldn't suggest you drink one with tonic or anything like that, but they're not going to kill you, but they can cause skin irritation. All right. Um, so stay away from fabric. And not only that, it's kind of a, somebody, there's companies out there that are trying to push printing on fabric. Yeah. Uh, direct to garment printers. The inks are so much less expensive yep. relative to the inks for these as well. So and, and, they, and they feel better. And but, they feel better and they work, they work on cotton, which was the majority. But you know, you can, you can print on wood and yep. chloroplast and cardboard and all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's crazy. There, it really comes down to, you know, the, the surface being having a, a friendliness to, to inks. And a lot of that times, you know, we may have to test stuff or we can share with you what we've been exposed to that has worked. Oh, it printed over. it upside down. It did, yeah. Not again. All right, fixed it. All right. So there you go. We had what, 35 cents worth of ink? Yep. Right? And maybe a dollar for the blank. And that was about Great. a six minute print or something, something like that. that. I didn't even time, probably five or six minutes. Yeah. So let's say you can turn 10 of these around an hour, right? Even if you sell them for 15 bucks. All right. And even if you had a buck and a half into it, you're making what? $135 an hour with your printer. It's pretty good. That's we're going to donate this to the city of Miami Beach. All just right. So. All right. Now, what we're going to do is our secondary sign. I'm going to go ahead and load it up so you don't need to see that part over here again. This is a, this is a regular type sign like you would put in your parking lot. Um, we've got one out, out front that we printed for uh, the boss that's, uh, you know, his parking space. Yep. Uh, we have an employee of the, a week place that we printed. So we decided we'd do one of these. Just get it in position here. All right. So if, uh, if any of you are already in the custom apparel business, 
um, or the sign business maybe. If you want to get, in, get into uh, wedding favors, if you want to print on jewelry, yep. if you want to do photos on the wood or glass, if you want to print on um, some canvases, you know, I mean, they're great. This isn't a correct The awards award. business is... We back printed. Got to hold it still for a sec so it can focus. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is some great stuff right there. You can, you, if you have to be a small toilet seat. Yeah. But now I have to. Oh boy! Now I have. Now we have to show it. Thanks to Hannah. You know, it it was Hannah's idea, and I'm not going to hold it. So you. It's not like it was you used. Know, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I don't want to. Not be like it was used. This was printed on one of the bigger UV printers, uh, but there is uh, some imagin some imagination going on. And but it's also it's a good point. We had to disassemble all the hardware off of this. You know, we had to take the the yep. stoppers yeah, yeah, off. Yeah. All right, so. You just got to be smarter than the item you're printing on. Yeah. I would say we could probably print on this. We couldn't print probably on Probably not. Yeah. yeah. Too big. All right. So you I'm going to get back to your house. I'm going to skip over here to the software again. Yep. So we can show you what we've done. Obviously, we already know what we have done for the alignment. All right. Where do you. Uh, I want to go back to the designer. There you go. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're back at the designer software and we. Uh, don't need the lizards anymore. So we're gonna turn them off, I'll buy lizards. And I wanna be able to see this sign, so I wanna turn my page blank back to white just so I can see it. Now we turn this layer on. Now, this is a practical application. Hey, hey John, we, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left in the webinar today, okay. so make sure that we, we get this. Wow, thanks for the pressure. <laughs> If I, had, if I had a big hook or a net, then that would be... That's a good point. Idea. And if we would have not had to go into the whole thing about recording. Um, at the be <laughs> so anyway, this is a practical application. If you go to, you know, and it could be anybody, TGI, Fridays, Chili's, Applebee's, places like that, um, Outback, where you drive up, you park, they bring your food out to you, right? And they like to have signs. They don't just want to have some generic sign. They want their logo on it. That's what we're doing here. Going to do the same thing here. I'm going to print to the rip. But this is a white sign, so I'm not going to need to print this to the same cube because I'm just going to do a single layer. So this is going to print pretty quick. So I want to print this to our single layer. All right. Again, I always like to check, but I know I still have a check to the edge of the sign blank. So that's still my zero, zero. All right. I'm going to send that over. I'm going to boldly do what I think I'm supposed to do here. I'm going to share a screen and I'm going to go to the rip and share. Bada bang. You don't have to show me things more than five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. All right. So this one, we're going to print again. I'm going to print this in a fast mode. And I'm going to print it right here, bidirectional. All right. Uh, we don't need to worry about white ink. We're not printing white ink. Did it change back to unidirectional? Oh, I, no, it didn't. You know what it's like when you have like seven chefs in the kitchen? Welcome to my world. Uh, <laughs> rip, we're ripping this now. It's going to process this job. Oh, we are 35 cents on the last one. Let's see what we are on this one. I don't remember. I did run it through once, but it's not, I don't believe it's as much as. This is 29. So 30 cents, similar cost to the other. And we're going to go ahead and I'm not worried about looking at it because I've already looked at it. I'm just going to print it, send it on over and uh, migrate back over here to talk a bit more about the printer. So a lot of folks are looking at, you know, where, where can you, what do you do once you have one of these printers? How do you market things to your customers? If you already have a business, all right, and you're doing apparel, things like that for your customers, what you can do is print up ad specialties, one off to give to the customer and give it to them when they get a, an order of shirts and an order of hats, anything like that, right? You could drop in a pen that has their logo on it. You can drop in a, a luggage tag that has their logo and maybe your logo on it, just enticing them. So it's your customers are spending money on ad specialty things. You might as well go ahead and do it for them, right? They, they, they trust you, they know you, right? So why wouldn't they want to you know, continue to do business with you? You already have their logos and everything. It's just an easy add-on sale for you. You know, we're, we live in a Walmart society. We go into the Walmart to, to do some shopping. We can get groceries. We can pick up 
all the stuff we need for around the house, fishing rod, vacuum cleaner bag. But we can also go to the front, we can grab a burger at McDonald's. We can get our cell phone recharged. We can get our nails done. I'm trying to think of all the things I've seen in the front <laughs> of a Walmart. There's, it's almost limitless. That's what, there's subways, I mean, so, yeah, you get your glasses. It's a, we're a one-stop shopping society. Yeah. So why not do it for your customers with the apparel and the graphics? Put it out on something different. Yeah. So think about it too as a product differentiator for you. Sure. Um, as uh, if all of the apparel people, and we're going to have to close, I think, before this is done. If uh, if all of the apparel, if all of your competition is uh, is encroaching on your custom T-shirt territory, then adding something like signs and novelties like this is really going to uh, to make you stand out. So I'm going to have Mark pull this away, and it's like watching those cooking shows, folks. You know, when Bobby Flay says, "You put this in the oven, and 35 minutes later, that happens." There you there, go. Okay. There you have your casserole. All right. So, again, practical application. You can do things for fun, you know, creative stuff like the, the you know, my, your falling iguanas or I love my Lhasa Apsa. Or you can do practical applications, things like this. You can, for businesses, parking signs, you know, employee recognition, things like that as well. Signage inside of your building and whatnot. We've sold a lot of these machines to companies that are just using them to do internal signage inside of their their factory yep yep so all right that's the uh value jet 426 uf i'm don copeland with cold Essie. if you have any questions contact us via our website or via your, the reps you're already working with thanks for taking some time all right we